Hi, I'm Mike Lohm, Director of Helmet Research and Development here at Bell Sports. Hi, I'm Brian Sidwell. I'm the Test Lab Supervisor. I make them. And I get to break them. So the first stage in the process is to go to a two-dimensional sketch. The next stage is the foam mock-ups. We do half-scale mock-ups. Then we go into the clay phase, where they sculpt the clay by hand. In the laboratory, our job is to measure the energy-absorbing characteristics of the helmet. What we do here is actually place a helmet in between a metal head form and a metal anvil. Then we actually drop it. Prior to doing the impact testing, we place the helmets in a number of different environmental chambers. There's a freezer where we actually freeze the helmets. We have an oven where we heat the helmets up. And then the third chamber is actually a water tank where we submerge the helmets into water. Science helps us save lives by development of new materials that actually absorb energy better. Did you know by just placing a helmet on your head that you're 88% more likely to prevent a head injury? So what we have here is a simulated jello brain. And we're gonna drop this from this height to simulate what it's like in a bicycle crash. All nice and one piece. So now we're, we're gonna simulate what it's like without a helmet. The bowl will, will represent the skull. Ooh, not good. Wear your helmet. Make your own funny putty. You'll need a quarter cup of white glue, a teaspoon of borax crystals, and some water. Mix the borax in water. Then pour in the glue and stir. It'll turn a little stickier and stickier. And pretty soon you've got a blob of funny putty. Now stretch it slowly. And then, quickly. One works better. How far can you get? Oh, yeah! Serious ski jumpers don't let little things like the seasons get in their way. Very impressive. In the winter, there's an all-snow track, but in the summer, there's a ceramic track, and you roll across the balls as you go down. Way back last winter, we picked two old techniques to compare to the V-style. Our first technique is the cranker with arms waving in a circle. Then there's the modern V position. Finally, we put our arms forward in the air and call it Superman. Fasten your seatbelt. We'll test these three flight positions three times each. We'll measure our jump distance with hill markers, and we'll record each jump with a video camera. Just gotta right, set it up go. from like 100 to 140. Ooh, I feel special. You're terrible with the camera, man. No, I'm not. That's good right there. Here we go now. A friend of ours is gonna record the distance of our jumps. Hi. I'm here to avenge my brother. I am your brother, you idiot. Ah. What doing you are? Jump. We all had our own ideas about how the test would go. The V position, which we use now, is going to be the best, and we're going to go the farthest. But then the arms out in front is going to be second, and the crankers is going to be last. I think the worst one is going to be the cranker, because it's going to like give us some drag. When you're waving your arms, you're losing a lot of air. But do we have proof? We're ready if you are. Test number one, the cranker. So we just pop our chest and wave our arms. Yeah, fly like a bird. quality. Thank you. It's just so different from what we normally do. We usually just try to stay rigid and solid in the air. Maybe they thought getting over your skis is going to make you go farther? Seems like everybody's coming way up with the chest when they try this. It's kind of hard to hit your takeoff right and then start cranking your arms. You're not much of a cranker, you're more of a flapper. So you're John Flapper now. That's okay. I was in Park City, Utah, and my right ski tip dropped and went under me and got caught by the wind and kind of flipped me over and I landed on my head. No broken bones, thankfully. I kind of tipped in. My skis caught the landing, so I was sliding on my face backwards. It wasn't fun. When I was, like, right about to land, I look over at my grandpa. I'm like, hi, grandpa. And I land and I go straight into the hay bales. My skis stick underneath. I fly forward. Never ever do that. You could fall and then you would lose your points again. Test number two, V style. Tried cranking again. I didn't try. <laughs> you got good at the cranking. You kind of get it stuck in your head of what you've been doing the last couple jumps. Then you try to do it again and try to improve on it. 
my tails were not touching, not even close. When my skis get like an H, not a V, you lose a lot of momentum that way. Guinness Book of World Records, shortest and worst jump. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The hardest part of ski jumping is walking back up. We are now about to watch the first of John's three Superman jumps. Let's see what he can do. <laughs> nice, John. That was like a Superman cranker. That one made you come way up with the chest because you had to throw your arms forward. We had the different in-run position that time. Playing with your in-run really messes you up. For me, the Superman is probably the hardest just because you don't have your hands back to help control you in the air. I'm glad I wasn't born in the 30s. Music to my ears. <laughs> We combined our scores and figured out the averages for each of the jumping positions. The V was definitely victorious and the best. Next came the cranker, and last, the Superman wasn't so super. The cranker, jumping and then swinging your arms makes your, uh, your chest come up and the wind hits you and you drop. The Superman, right away you gotta start with a weird in run, and then when you jump, you kinda just put your arms forward, and with that you come off and your chest just goes up and you roll your head back and then you lose all your air and you get a lot of wind friction and resistance. It looks just like you. Thank you. When you're doing the V, it gives you more lift. I can feel the air pushing me up and bringing me farther down the hill. We're also way more familiar with the V position, so that's probably a big part of why it was so much better than the other two. The old timers, that's how they grew up, so they'd be a lot better at them. <laughs> Our grandparents had different air flights than we do right now. Will our grandkids find a different way to fly through the air and go farther? They better not break our records or diss our style. Hey, maybe the future's in ski flying. The world record is 225 meters, but that was set in Slovenia. Yeah, we gotta get some passports. Go, go, go. It's possible to paddle a canoe with your feet if you have the right kind of paddle. Like this one. It's called a jet blade, and it fits onto any canoe. It allows you to sit upright and still use your feet. It works by converting the back and forth motion of your legs into a rotational motion of the paddle. Anyone can use it, but it's especially popular with folks who like to fish. Whoa! It's a beaut. Let's go, Dragonfly TV. I'm curious. Dragonfly TV. If you're a new, uh-oh.